these athletes are out there really competing for glory, for fun, for experience, because most of them provisionally have got through. Yes, exactly. So it will be a different vibe than yesterday's semi-final, um, where it was all very tense. So a low start, Hannah. Red tape indicating holds, as we said earlier. So one on each hold that the tape is pointing to. And quite a powerful move this as you launch right to bad right hand. She looked in a good position but then her right foot slipped so it's she went down. So Jane looks up again, crosses through better this time, more accurate on that crimp. Jumps out to the first scoring zone. She has to use it and by moving her feet like that she will. And we think there's a left hand and maybe a palm. Yes. So Jenya will pull on again with about half her time remaining. Crosses through to the crimp. Another slip. Yeah. Just like it was the first go. She's back on. Let's have a look at those feet. It's the right foot. She nails it in now and then makes a spring into the sloper. Let's see if she can get this palm this time. Jumping up. Ah, closer this time. I feel like you can really see her like just being a little more relaxed and enjoying the climbing. I mean, she should be, but um, already walking out just with that big smile to the face. Like, I feel like in the past few rounds, she was even more focused and like more in her zone than now. And maybe perhaps uh, it's difficult to say as focused with that. We see quite a few foot pops from Jenny. So she just needs to focus in now. You see that little shake of her head. She's just talking to herself, trying to get herself into this mindset. Yes, but we also we said it before. It's like she did already a lot of climbing the past few days, so it's also understandable if she gets a little tired at some point. Well, this lady knows what it's like to stand on an Olympic stage already. She was in Tokyo. There are a few. Lucia Dorfel had the same thing. I can't remember which boulder it was, but obviously one of them was causing them to hit their faces, which is not ideal. And the left uh, starting hold. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, exactly. It all can change as well. Your plan isn't necessarily what you have to. And she starts with that right foot on the jib into the slope at matching and a big kick up towards the 10 now. And she holds Nicely it. Nicely done. Can she bring the feet back in? Just. So that should be awarded now. She should get the 10. But a big jump to the top here. That's a body length away, isn't it? And blind around the corner. Yeah, also hard to see that top hole. It's not big. Oh, yeah, really hard to get it. She missed it now, too. And I thought she did the start really well because she was starting with the right foot on the left volume and then just the tapping on the, on the right one so she could save some energy there, like not having to switch the feed. So, yeah, this is the tap that Hannah was talking about. A little tap to make sure you're in the right position. No. Well, this is probably last chance for me to get this one done. I mean, maybe she'll go again. Yeah, she'll run back on. One last attempt and a throw at this. She's going to have to be speedy, though. Less than 20 seconds now. Athletes must complete the boulder within the time. Mira, I think, is going to call it a day and say goodbye. So Laura Rogera runs on. She's joining quite a few Italian teammates with those provisional tickets. It is great to see Team Italy bringing you a bid squad and getting rewarded for it. Patrice Colli for the speed last night. Pretty good outdoor climbing in Italy as well, if you uh, that's your thing. Yes, definitely worth checking out. We had a look at the crimp then. It's not a bad crimp, that. It is in cut. The friction won't be the best. The friction is always pretty awful on these holds. Oh, yeah. Actually, Laura's trying it differently now. I'm trying to work out a wrap with that left hand. You saw her trying to guppy it right at the bottom. Let's have another look up. She's trying it again like this. That's our leaderboard at the top. Coming up to the two minute now, and Laura not finding a solution to the first couple of moves of this boulder. <laughs> but uh, the principle is that it's your skin touching the hold, the skin's providing the friction, and therefore if it's sweaty and hot, or if you have bad skin. Nasty slip on a sharp crimp or on a big volume with a lot of friction, so it just takes a lot of skin uh, from you uh, bouldering around like this, and it's the third bouldering round of them. You lose more skin falling than climbing. <laughs> I mean, like climbing and falling. Yeah. But like, if you do everything first go, you lose less skin, obviously. So you have to move your feet, do something to show the judges. So touching it like she did with the left hand like that isn't going to count. Ten seconds to go. Last chance to get the low zone. Not enough time to top it. 
And with that, Lara will say goodbye. She waves and will exit the stage. All right, Erin runs on. If this is the sort of raw version of Erin, I am terrified for the other competitors in a few years' time when she's got everything down. She'll start with the launch, though. Make sure of the feet. Hits the right hand straight into the left. There we go. Wow, and actually made it work with having that right foot on the right volume. Doing it, like, kind, not statically, but with a lot less speed than some of the other athletes. Uh, very controlled. She's joining provisionally uh, a stacked GB team for Paris 2024. It looks so smooth. It doesn't look like she's jumping. It's like she's like, reaching and casually going to the left there. Yeah, Very strong from her, yeah. Well, Erin might use this as an opportunity to just put a statement down for the other athletes. So watch out, I'm coming. Let's see if she can do this final move. She can. That left hand just held herself on. She's got to match with two hands, presses in, and our first athlete completes the boulder. Wow. She's like waiting for you to finish to be like, wow, wow, wow. Well, next onto the mat is 18-year-old Jilu Luo from People's Republic of China. And Jenny Kazbekova will join us on Boulder 2. So we get to see power Boulder through the roof. Jilu Luo not getting the, uh, the range, first of all, but Jenny launching up. Already in the first zone. That's what she's going for. And bad feet through there. And oh, no. So she's grabbing her knee, and that is not so good. That's the last thing you want to do, secure an Olympic ticket and then get injured in the final. And that's also why I was wondering if people would, like, actually uh, like be more careful while they climb. Hopefully that was not too bad. Just a little tweak there. Yeah, we haven't seen a shot of her, so I'm not sure if she's getting attention or if she's pulled back on. We'll stick with Gilolo at the moment as she comes down. So she's on her feet again, which is good news. Doesn't seem to be too affected by that. Yes. Sometimes it's also really hard to tell because sometimes it's just like a weird position. But also she has to go into back into that position again if she tries it the same way. So I guess it was the left. Yeah, she's not going to do it now. It was no. the left heel. She's going to try it differently now. Yeah, she's dangling that left leg down. and Because before she had that really it. high left heel and now she decided not to use it. Julia Law jumps up to the top. Um, yeah, that escalated a little bit, but um, she will leave some chalk for the other athletes to use. So that's really nice. Yeah. Generous of her, you know. If you need some chalk, head down to the stadium. I'm sure they're well obliged. <laughs> Julia Law springs up again. Better. She palms down. Left hand up. Matches. And top is in sight. She touched it. Tickled it. Can she finish things off? Leaps. No, but she had that well. Yeah, but you can see how big that move is and how well Eric did stick with it. Oh, oh, powerful it. Virginia. Keeps that left foot in this time. Really good job from her. Still not sure if she wants to really rely on that left foot. Yeah, the right heel is in, hooking underneath. Left hand pings this time. Yeah, you know, Jenya is not looking good on that knee. I think it, you don't know if it's a, a problem or just a tweak that you need to sort of climb off. We've all had those yeah, moments. Yeah, just like out there on stage, the adrenaline is there, and sometimes it's really hard to tell how serious it is. And it's so hard to stop. You know, you don't want to stop. So, um, yeah, really tough situation there, and it's just like painful to see. Like, uh, because you can see Chenya being in pain and uh, actually refusing to uh, use that left foot if she doesn't need to. She's also trying to land only on her right foot. So uh, maybe when she's back on stage, she, she can get some treatment from the physio and uh, find out what's going on. Well, Gina Law with eight seconds needs to be quick here. Starts the process, jumps up. No, it's going to get timed out as well. She lands back in her dust pile of chalk with a puff. Pressing in. Mia Crample nods to Miho Nanaka on the side. Miho Nanaka will run on onto the right. Yeah, so uh, maybe that'll get cleaned up. We'll see. Or she'll use it perhaps on the ground. So Miho launches up. Beautiful from her. Well executed. That looked so easy. <laughs> yeah, lovely climbing. Right, she'll set for the second jump as Mia Crample is facing into the wall. Oh, Miho gets it. Nicely done. Can Having she? Miho flashing that high zone. She's under 30 seconds gone already only. And she is in. Well, with less than a minute to go, it should be a match, and it is perfect start for Miho Nanaka. Yes, beautifully done. So, Mia Crample looks like she almost wanted a knee bar in there. Thought better of it. She dangles that left knee like Jenya did. It's a weird movement there. 
Like you don't really know where to put your body, right? Yeah. Ah, slipping off that crimp. So um, it looks like a really uh, weird movement to get out of that kind of roof and uh, get high enough to move out of it. Yes, it's a steep old roof, this one. Steepest part of our boulder wall. Out with the right foot, see if she'll do again. Yeah, getting that crimp dialed in again. Oh, now using the left heel that we saw Jenya try, but not really happy with it. Yeah, you can see the angle. That is a I'm kind of grit in my teeth there. Oh, wow, what a good camera shot. So uh, not a lot of time to recover. It's mostly just to uh, dry the sweat and uh, get uh, hydrated again, drink some water, observate the route, and then it's time to go already again. Yeah, so the athletes just need to stay in touch with each other here. You don't want to slip too far behind. You leave yourself so much work to do. That's better for Mia Crample. Just powered up. Yes, that looked really well done. And you can see how bad this hold is, even with the little bump chip. Oh, wow. Very well done for Mia there. 25 Reaching seconds. The left. She's got to flash this last sequence. Oh, you see how shouldery that is and how intense getting also this outside door and having to hold it all with your right shoulder. All right, Laura Rogera will try it, boulder number two. Chan So will come on for boulder number one. Heavily taped up, but to our knowledge, no injuries, just maybe prevention. I feel like yesterday was still one shoulder. Now. No, I think you're right. I think it was the right yesterday. Yeah, athletes do wear a lot of tape. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. It can just be a psychological, just protecting an area. Laura goes for the heel and the right foot. She's now going to try the power method. Oh, get a right heel. Interesting. And matches. That's her specialism, isn't it? Crimping your own fingers on the wall. All right, let's keep an eye on the right of our screen. It's Jen So pulls on, crosses through. Lara will launch left hand, right hand. See how she has another go at this sequence. It's this high right toe. She's going with the left heel again. Will she rock up or will she just use it to get established? I think she's going to go for the rock up. Immediately she proves me wrong. Crosses feet, goes for the right instead. I almost gets it done. Lara has tried everything here. I think she's going to go back to the left heel. Yeah, she's going to rock up on this. So how flexy is she feeling on that heel? Rocks. Oh, but yeah, we've seen how far it is when Mia Crumple tried it. So big support from the crowd. They're here to see their heroes. Lots of uh, autographs being signed throughout the last couple of days. Sport climbing, of course, has uh, lots to look forward to in the future. LA. And of course, an announcement about para climbing as Shian So comes down head first onto the mat. She just saves herself by putting her arms in there, but that was nervy. Oh, wow, yeah, because her right hand slipped and there was so much pressure on it. And she was like just um, diving down there head first. That was scary to see. I hope she's okay. Lara stretches up, that knee locked in. She makes it work though. Now we'll switch the knee into a toe, reduce some of the risk from that move. Makes the match. Good friction from her, but can't hold it. That's such an aggressive heel on the left there. We've got some, certainly at the moment, some provisional news about the uh, next Parrot Games, but that will all be sorted out this week, so the future yes. is bright for us. So sport. exciting. Ah, oh, sticks it with the left hand. Much better from her. Right. Nicely done from her, getting the high zone. But now... Uh, Maybe last attempt on the last move, or maybe second to last attempt. So she has to be very precise here. Oh, wow. wants to do it statically. I think that sloper is also not good enough for that. You'd have to get your left foot. That's worth a try. Yeah, you'd have to put your left foot on the high zone in that case. It's going to go for the jump. Not really set. The left foot was not in the correct position. But getting the high zone, getting more points on the scoreboard. So Aaron runs on, and Brooke Rabatu joins us. Rabatu from the USA. Her teammate Natalia Grossman qualified for the Olympics the Pan Am Continental Qualifier last year. She has secured her provisional ticket in the OQS. Erin launches into the power move. Brooke. Ah, oh, incredible. Flashing into the low zone. Starts to get set up for the high zone. Springs off that volume. Holds the human flag. Erin as well, boosting up. What strength from her. Hard to know where to look at the moment. It's all action. 
Erin into the high zone. Fingertips only keeping her on. Can she get her feet engaged? She can with the toe. That saved her. Brooke launches, gets the top. Erin comes down. Brooke will bring that left hand in. She's got a high toe. Outrageous. Makes the match in a flash for Brooke. Bit of a masterclass from that lady there. And also to uh, keep the camera clean, like the, I think. Oh, and the also, shots. Yeah, the shots. Anna, you're, you're becoming a, a TV uh, aficionado here. <laughs> no, I think that's also no, in the you're mix. Correct. It's not the main reason, but... It makes it look cleaner, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. if you would have like 10 hats sitting there at the bottom of your screen, I don't know. That yeah. would be best. Yeah. Erin uh, cruised this move before. She, uh, sorry, not cruised it. She just got fingers on it before. She did a similar thing that time. Erin is going to be uh, cheered up this climb here. 48 seconds on the clock. Last chance for her, I think. She's going to have to commit to this move again. Boosts up using the right hand. That is the strength of Erin McNeese. Yeah, we've we'll seen Mia Crumple like, made really good work of that move, doing it statically. Erin will leave looking. Yeah, high zone and a top on the first one. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Erin Winnie's leading the way, 34.9. But Rabbity with that flash, though, she hasn't even climbed boulder number two. She's in second place. Ahead of uh, Mihona Naka because of the position that Brooke Rabbitu got into this final. She was ahead of Miho. And uh, Jenya Kaspeka was walking out again, and now she has a pink tape on her knee. So I think there was some busy work included. Yeah, she'll have had treatment back in the ISO area. Hopefully, well, we'll see soon if it will affect it her too much. She'll take it easy. Jilu Lo, meanwhile, will start her climb underneath the wall. Jenny's on a slab, which actually for a knee inch or a knee tweak or whatever she's got going on there, there's going to be a lot of weight through that knee when climbs like this. It depends on where the knee actually hurts and if it already hurts to walk and put pressure on it or if it's mostly like having it in a bent position like we saw before with the heel hook she's taking her time legs cross she'll want to unwind that right leg behind her body and land down on that volume like that close and a move like that it really depends where you put your foot on that volume yeah choices yes and you have to stay really close to the wall with your hips once your hip comes out it's really hard to stay on the wall still you see the little powers to the sloper, right hand sticking like glue here. She gets a toe hook in. We saw Erin put that in in desperation. Gilu looked a bit more planned for it. Big spring up, right hand holding the flag. That's powerful stuff, and she's going to get this. Wow. Makes the match. Very impressive. I wonder if it's just the hold or if there's a chip there as well. Like I think there crimping. is a, a yeah, chip Yeah, because underneath. she was crimping. That move looks massive. Second, like first top, but second try for her. Yes, and you're like uh, people tend to ask like the first time they go climbing, why do you have to wear them short, uh, smaller? Like usually when you go climbing the first time, maybe you don't take them smaller. But um, uh, when they ask uh, how, why are you taking them so much smaller? It's just because they have a much better feeling, a lot more control. Um, so your toes kind of caged in, and it's like it's really pointy, and you have like more feeling on your toes, which is exactly what you want to have, especially on small footholds feel how sweaty it is up she stands onto the first jibs big volume creating almost a ledge there on the wall but a ledge that's hard to stand on yeah and the five zone hold here it's basically nothing i mean she's trying to crimp it there but i've seen it before in a close-up it's not not really a good hold yeah, it's a long boulder this right in the middle of the wall it takes a lot of time as well. it's like a piece of modern art it just <laughs> should be the tate Oh, she nearly uh, lost it there, palmed on the wall. To say yeah, to first time she actually struggled a little with that move. Looking much smoother with that unwind now and gets nice. it done. And that like uh, outside step, or I don't know how you want to call it, back step with the other foot to, um, to keep herself on the wall was really smart. She hasn't got enough. Well, she's got eight seconds remaining here. It could be a buzzer beater, but she needs to launch for this final hold. Three seconds to go. It is going to be a buzzer beater. What a top for Jenya. Nicely done. Oh, wow. She didn't believe it yet that she could do that. And that was close. Actually, when the buzzer was beeping down, I was like, oh, no. 
I don't think that's going to be enough because actually I wasn't sure you can actually hold that top hold so well. So Miho Nanaka will enter on women's number two after that brilliant flash of boulder number one. She's right up there in the points. Mia Cramper walks down towards the slab to begin her careful journey across. You can see the boxes I was talking about earlier down at the bottom. So one green box for low zone, two for high zone, three for a top. It's a visual cue for you. So which way is Miko going to do it? She's looking for that right foot. She's going to boost off that right, I think. Nicely done. Oh, Mia gets the knee involved. I love to see that. She gets the toe and then twists the knee over to the right. Technical climbing from her. Yes. Work out. And Miho already on the last move, but uh, we've seen how hard it is. Miho did well flashing everything until that last move. She nearly made it two out of two. Have to go again, though. Mia, different method this time, or I think a director method. Less faffing around, but that doesn't work either. Yeah, the athletes can bring a spare pair of shoes out. Usually it just slots into two categories, stiff or soft, and the athletes kind of choose their tool for the for the boulder. Mia Crample, meanwhile, will keep going. It's less powerful, that, but difficult in a different way. Yeah, she's looking for a way to get her foot up. I think it's a lot harder to uh, do it like this, but a bouldering round should include everything. Yes, a different style. Yeah, the setters have a uh, guidelines for the boulders here, so they are all within a certain type of climb. She's trying that way of sitting back on the right toe. Yeah, she's really like uh, turned around on the wall, not frontal like we saw Jenny trying it. As Mia got some power in those arms, she does for that move. Can she execute into the 10? Gets set, hits it, the toe keeping her in. Have to release that toe, of course, and get yourself ready for the jump. A really nice movement of like moving it and the toe at the same time. Oh, there was a little power scream there from Mio. Don't often see that, do you? Yeah. <laughs> There's some athletes that we're used to screaming. Very well deserved from Miho. Third attempt, she had one in between. Um, uh, last move, but uh, very well done. Mia goes until the buzzer will call her off. A little shrug of the shoulders. So Laura sprints down to the end towards the slab. That's why people usually tend to run. Yeah, we've discussed this before. And she couldn't wait to get on the ball, though, apparently, yes. because she's already on. I'm always of the mindset that I would walk and take my time, and you're like, no, nope, I would run. You would probably just like take your time, soak in every step. Just be like, yes, crowd, I'm here. <laughs> you and I, I, I leave you all waiting. <laughs> you may be right, but uh, no comment. <laughs> now, if we ever run into Boulder Cop to do it, I'm just going to do it to annoy you. <laughs> I've got to know you too well in the past few days to know what mindset you have. You know? Problematic. <laughs> right, two, the only one to do that so far. Brooke to come, of course. Yeah, this uh, standing up, like Chenya made it look pretty easy, but she's also a really good step climber and likes this kind of style. And now you can actually see how hard it's moving and how far it is too. You really have to step up all the way. Yeah. She's like spring-loaded her legs there. So. We stand up. Oh, and they have great clothes on. It's just one finger little... Uh, it's not even a pocket. It's like a dish. Yeah, dimple. Dimple. Okay. And oh. Now, Lara's been called off because she wasn't in the correct starting position. It was quite a late call by the judges, though. Leaves a little discussion because, like, of course, it takes more time. Sometimes the judges uh, say something right away, but if the crowd is loud or you're in your zone, like, you don't really hear it, so it's important that the judges actually go there and tell you because if they just scream from, like, off the stage, you're not going to hear it. Job from the judges, and they should do it as fast as possible so we still have time left and don't waste energy. Yes, Laura jumps over to jump that for her. Time will tell whether that will work. Laura pulls on once more. I love this spring. Oh, and she hit her knee on the way down. That does hurt, doesn't it? This one is better than something inside your knee or your leg, but it hurts it at the time. Yeah. But it happens a lot when you slip off and there's a volume in the way, then that's uh, 
usually a dangerous position to be in. Yeah, and it can play in your mind. Obviously, no one wants to crack your shin twice, so she has to try to put that behind her. Less than a minute now. Shen So using this heel method. The right leg just dangling underneath, reaching up into the sloper. Hits the heel. We're a bit sensitive about this left here now. A bit, yeah. Maybe it's... Uh, it's bad than it looks. She's crossing yeah. through in order to chalk. Wow. I mean, we have a lot of really uh, aggressive and nasty looking heel hooks in bouldering and in lead as well. So, athletes are also kind of used to this moves and uh, this kind of position. That left, I think she took too much time, really. So, Laura, again, it's a long way for her. Really has to jump over. No. She's done. Well, she's got a crack of the leg for her. Uh, effort for sure started the run perfectly with a flash now looking to do the same we haven't seen a flash more than up two we have seen two tops from the Anaka and Shino Noa but um, we know it's a hard one it's a powerful one yes it is she flashed the first time can she do a repeat here we are still looking just want to remind you for that perfect 200 but oh, Rabbitu yeah, sure. is my only yup oh, there it goes <laughs> You put on too much pressure, Matt. I just want to see it happen in my lifetime. Yeah. We still have the man after it. That's true. That's and the Olympics. Time. Yes. All right, Erin starts to creep over. She's only got one point of contact currently. Ah, uh, missed that right hand hold a little. Because actually she was a uh, pretty good position with her feet. Yeah, learning the distance is important. So, Brooke with the heel. She's going to do it quite dynamically off that heel as well. Goes high with the hold and then reverses, changes the heel into a toe. The Brooke loves a good heel hook. She's really good at them too. Yeah, true. So, she's eyeing up the final hold. We know what it requires here. Holding a human flag star move with the right hand. Up towards the jib, hangs, and that is a match. Nicely done. Another quick top from Brooke Rabbitu, and that will keep her near to the top of the uh, leaderboard. So, um, a lot of fruit setting, a lot of making sure the athletes get to train. Yes, and they let the other athletes conditions. in, which I yeah. really love. Like, you go to the TC, the training centre, and there's so many nationalities there. They're yeah. very open to everyone. Yes, like, especially also around the Salt Lake World Cup, but I feel like if uh, um, athletes just take a trip to the Salt Lake and just, like call or text them and be like hey we'll come to Salt Lake we train together I think it's a good example I really, yeah. really like it but Erin is I think the, pro the US athletes also profit from it you know yes exactly you, you know you only get you get better with better people around you exactly so Erin has to trust that left toe look at it she's trying to get a bit more rubber pressed on but it's just her tippy toes standing there at the moment and almost horizontal there I would not like to trust that left toe no. to be honest so she drops it down now. Yeah, I think that's better yeah. onto the jib. That's very high. Nice close up there. Tell you what, we know how good Jenny is in the slab, but the fact she did that last thing, 15 or so seconds, is yeah. pretty incredible. But uh, we talked about it last uh, yesterday in the semi final when Laura Rugara was uh, f um, topping the slab in like the last few seconds. And I think sometimes actually. Sometimes it's not good to rush it on the slab, but sometimes uh, it can actually help you not to overthink it. And when you don't have time to think about it, you're just going to do it. So sometimes that's actually the time pressure helps. To put it like that. Yes, it does. But sometimes it does. Stop so let's see if it works for Erin here. Well, she ran back to her chalk bag. 30 seconds to go now. She jumps over. She's got the range on that. So now she's about the same amount of time that Jenya has. So there's the same time pressure now. Maybe even a little more time. Oh, she just commits to the high foot. That did work. Brings the right in. 16 seconds. It's going to be another close one. No, she bubbles that right hand off. Ah, oh, yeah. Head that in That was hands. really close, yeah. So we're done with two of our boulders now. Oh, wow, yeah. And Brooke Rabbit too. Goodbye, blue boulder. Goodbye, pulse boulder. Yep, gone forever. Well, Brooke Rabbit and Mihonanaka battling it out for the top spot, 49s there. But, of course, the lower your bouldering score, the more you have to do on the leaderboard, and sometimes um, it's just really, really hard. Well, Jenya runs up to her boulder. That knee injury we worried about seemingly at, not too bad at the moment. Into the swinging move that we talked about before at Observation. Seems like a long time we talked about it. It's a long way. Big old TikTok and lands. Did she actually remove the tape actually from her knee? Oh, 
Maybe it was just the front and they couldn't see it. Gina Law, let's see if she's feeling slabby. She brings that right foot in to hit the wall, stop the movement. Leans over. You know those, uh, those workshops where you fall into people's arms? It's none of those. You have to sort of fall towards the hole to grab it. Jane starts the tick-tock. Back and forth. Hits the swing. I oh, know the tape is still there. There we go. Just didn't see it. So, she do up again. Stacking those fingers into the pocket. Oh, bobbles them. <laughs> Actually went for it and nearly made it work. Position. You don't often see run and jump starts in boulder anymore. It's kind of come out of fashion a bit. Once upon a time, it seemed like every boulder started like that. But I think if there's a run and jump, it's a lot uh, catching it with a toe, like here. She wants a brush. She's got lots of time as well. Jill Law, meanwhile, crosses through, eyes up this next hole. Trust falls, jumps, kicks that left foot outside. Back kick, but not the back kick that we see Jenny do on the volume, but like all the way out of the volume, very low down on the wall. Jenny will start the swing again. And there you can see how quickly this four minutes passed. Like we're already in 130. And I feel like she just came out to try that ball. Yeah, time going quick kip. Switch back to the left on the slab. Lands. Better. Yes. Nicely done. Toe bobbling across the wall, slowed the movement down. And now we know. Maybe that lower foot looks like the obvious option, but we've seen others do it with the high foot. Oh! oh. oh. It was such a tough slip, like on the edge. In a different position, I could actually uh, would be scared to bang her head on the volume. You know? I was a little scared there. Yes. Oh, okay, now I understand the move. I thought you have to go all the way to the 10th, but you actually have to go shoulder, switch feet, and then uh, stabilize with the right foot on the right hold there, either with the heel hook or with the toe. That's the theory. We'll see if she can execute with 35 seconds to go. Gilles Lula, meanwhile, trust the low crimp again. This is where she had that heart and mouth moment. She missed the jump up with the hand. Similar time we've seen from Aaron and Jenya, so not so much left. That was more careful from her. She has to get the foot up really high and match the one. There we saw Aaron fall. You don't have really space for your hands, you can see. She well, covers the whole hold with her hand, yeah. Also, having a foot that low, you at some point might need to change it up. So maybe it's better to start with it high. Um, what I would do is try to make sure I recover, if it's still possible, after four days of climbing. And then do a little um, endurance-based warm-up, just to make sure I'm ready for it. Okay. That's what the athletes who are done will be doing back there. We're sticking with a few more, though. Miho Nanaka stands up on the slab. Mia Krampel starts to swing over, but springs down the first time. Miho stands up tall, fingers in that dimple, that tiny dish. Unwinds and jumps through. Repeat it. You can see it's trying to get the range in, isn't she? Mia struggles on that run and jump start. Up again, getting herself in position there. You can see. It's not, she actually got two fingers in. Yeah, it's a finger stack when you do that. Yeah, run and jump. Hits the start hold, makes the match, goes to the sloper, up to the five. Swinging, starting to swing. Just using the wall to kick off and generate a bit of drive momentum. She doesn't really have enough swing yet. It's still pretty far on the left. Has to get a lot more on the right to be able to get um, her the center of your body just under the hole where she wants it to be to hold that one. That's that close up we love. Miho holds it this time. And lots of time left as well. Minute 49. Right, creeps out with a palm. Be careful still, though. There's not much she's standing on with that right she foot. She didn't even palm on the low one like the other step before. Like She was immediately going to the higher one. Good point. And you see how small that left one is and also how bad it is. 
doesn't really have a lot to hold on, just leaning against it with her thumb. Not really space to switch hands. Fingertips Ooh, for a sec. Trying to go straight to the top without matching the right one. Actually, that seemed like a good idea because there was no space for um, her right hand to match in with her left. So um, really close from Miho there. Hopefully she can get back up there and um, get it done. It's definitely tricky. It is. Well, Miho is one hold away from putting together an almost perfect run here. Got the high zone on this boulder, so she's right up there in the scoreboard anyway. But only 30 seconds left. Yeah, probably last chance for Miho here. And Mia might go again. She might call it a day. She's going to go again, try to get that zone. 19 seconds. We know this is enough time. She has to be precise now. She goes for the high foot. She just wanted to say, puts her foot up higher. Crosses through. Eight seconds. It's going to be another one, Hannah. Can she do it? Last chance. Yes, she can with three seconds to go. Not a buzzer beat. Just <laughs> so close. Wow. But, yeah, really well done from her. Adjusting just the little things with the higher foot and being very precise on the last move. Well, Shan So will have a look at this slab. Laura will try to finish things off. Just 14 at the moment. Just had the greatest of boulder rounds here. Yes, I think it also depends a lot about the setting for her sometimes. Now, what, what, what fits her style, what doesn't so much. Yes, maybe, maybe a slab will settle things down here. Brings that left foot in. Gets set for the unwind. Oh, the right foot bobbled before she was ready, though. It seemed like she wanted to release it and then step to the right. Yes, let's watch those feet again. She'll get stood up. Crimping hard with the right hand. Now gets still up tall on the boulder. Brings that left foot in. Watch the right foot, everyone. That's what went before. Fingers working hard. Just one. Really <laughs> pushing. Missed the right hand jib. And Laura, after a couple of goes in the run and jump, is in. But she's super stretched out there. Getting the first zone though. Scores on the board. Always good to have. Yeah, points mid prizes, isn't it? So Laura, but she will drop back down here. It's not super comfortable with this boulder. It's such a long way. No, but it's uh, it's a very <laughs> odd feeling. It's awkward. You can't really get any drive forward. Sucks you down. It's, it's, it feels heavy. It feels well. heavy. Exactly. Yeah. It's not. I don't know. I hate it. <laughs> My prejudice is coming out against running on boulder mats here. Yeah, it's a factor. Yeah. She'll pump her arms as she runs towards this. But sprint-like as she comes up, trying to drive the momentum up. But that's what I mean. You, you, it's hard to spring off the mat onto the volume and continue the momentum. Yeah, and not run into the wall, oh, kind of. I have done and that. And it's always, once. I feel like that's what I'm always scared of. That I would just like run and then slip and then like crash into the wall yeah. or whatever. And it's a pretty long way. Like the start is pretty high up, so she has to run pretty hard. Well, she's running somewhere off screen. Meanwhile, Xian So crosses through. She's not running. No, she is not. But Lara was and made progress. Comes down though, going towards the 10. This is much better on the left here. She'll put the foot on the low hold, which is the most obvious way of doing it. Can she get the match done? Ah. Only seeing that match getting done by uh, Jenya so far. She tried the method that Miho did. I don't think she will have enough time. It's only 15 seconds to go. No, we've seen close calls on this one, but this is a big ask. 10 seconds, yes. Yeah, so not going to be enough time here. But great to see her fighting to the very end. 3, 2, 1... <laughs> And it's actually so impressive to see that she could repeat that move right away. I feel like um, that's a very important skill as well. Yeah, of course, it's place. a big event. It is. There's lots of moving parts. There. More than people realise behind the scenes. Yeah, for sure. So, Erin will start this run and jump. Great round so far. One top, but high zones and all the others. Who misses that toe hook. Almost overpowered. <laughs> Went too much on the left with that toe hook. Kind of the opposite of Laura, who was struggling yeah. to get to the hole. There and went too far. Yeah, that's the thing. I have to find the right balance, not overpowering it, but also getting uh, high enough. 
So, Brooke, make sure of that left foot. Struggling with the right, just a little tap, and look, like ballet dancer-esque. And Erin, what was that? That's a ballet dancer. How did she catch that with a right? Yeah, right, then uh, switching left foot, putting the right foot uh, as a toe, and then switching hands. So much at the same time. And again, now, also like a pedal move for the rest, so... No, oh. I thought she was going to flash that one. <laughs> uh, for a second, I thought she was, she was staying a little bit too long and that move before the top. Long enough to get... Uh, the momentum and the height for the top. But really impressive climbing from her, flashing that move to the right. To yes. The second yeah, exactly. To flash that top sequence would have been impressive. Well, Brooke stands up now. A bit over balance. I managed to save herself. Left foot on. Expect Erin to rest for a bit here. She's had plenty of time. I mean, figured out the sequence immediately. Oh, almost. Yeah, she came out of the wall pretty, pretty hard. Like her left hip was like out of the wall way too much. Erin is in almost. Crossing uh, over. That was a crazy method that I didn't expect her to try. Also, I didn't expect her to try to get back on. Like that. It's a dynamic move, like boulder. It's not as powerful. It is powerful, but not as powerful as the second ball. Erin reminds me of uh, Orianne when she came to this level for the first time. She, both the athletes just try things that are unusual, and it's so good to watch for us. So, Brooke, into the second half of this boulder. What's she got planned here? She's palming down on the right. I think she's going to try to put the left foot up where her fingers were. Yeah. Erin having no issues getting to the high zone. Just this last move eluding her. Oh, and now directly. Like she tried three different methods and now made the third one work. That was amazing. Now she directly jumped to both of the holds. Right hand on the top of left hand. On the hold before. And Brooke Rabatou, I think, also got the top done. She did. Synchronised sending out on the mat so the athletes will leave together. Brooke Rabatou moves in first position with 74.7. Still has to climb the last boulder. But just in front of me and like, a, like a, the pressure there's on their shoulders is just incredible. Exactly. All that Hard to imagine what they feel right now. No excuse to turn off your TV. Please don't leave. We've got lots to come. Gila Law misses the toe as well. In a similar way to Erin did. Now gets it done. Yeah, now we have full focus on this boulder. Erin was so quick on that, we kept missing the action. But this swing is trickier than she made it seem. Though it's kind of arching downwards, it's the legs you need to look for. And that's more of a sideways movement. So just to explain that rule, something I get asked about a lot. Yeah, it's more sideways than downwards, for sure. But still, it can feel a bit scary. Yeah. So she leaps, swings, misses the grab. Yeah, taking quite a few attempts here. It's like, like I, I think I already talked about it um, in the past already. Like sometimes you underestimate like how much energy also the swinging uh, moves take from you. Oh, that was close. But also it takes more energy from you than you might think because it's not only swinging around; it's also pulling hard on your hands and like actually uh, catching these swings is also really exhausting. Yes, it is. Well, Gilles Lalor will try to do that exhausting movement again. This is what you're talking about. Yeah. And as you said before, it's also a lot about tension in your body and uh, core. <laughs> I don't know. How would you call it? I don't know. I call it like a wet bat. <laughs> Let's go with wet bat. So Gilles Lalor up again. Yeah. Onto the sloper. Yes, that is so core intensive. Oh. Wow, that was beautiful. Then. It looked like a little dance. Yeah, a little skip with the legs to get into position. And now this jump, though, but it's not a gimme. It's hard. The one, two, the double clutch. Wow, that was perfectly executed. Like, she stayed exactly the right amount of time on that hold before the top, before moving to the right. That was perfect. <laughs> All right, Miho runs up. She's in second place at the moment with Boulder to go. Up towards the five, start the TikTok. 
just a little kick off the wall. But they were so impressive from Eric flashing it because sometimes you just need a few tries to kind of like for your body to kind of understand and learn the movement and how you have to swing to get it perfectly uh, dialed in. So uh, really impressive really flashing that from Eric. Yes. All right. Yeah, we'll start again. Better angle. So she looks over to the clock. Starts to run in again. Left toe underneath. Oh, that was way better. So she takes the breath, winds herself up for the jump again, springs in, really got the range on that toe hook now. Yeah, no problem on that first move for her. Nicely done. Oh, that was great to see. Like she really like got better and better and closer and closer on this move from attempt to attempt. Yeah, now can she figure out this last sequence? No, she's gonna have to piece yeah, it together. Yeah, she slipped off there. Hopefully she can repeat it. Talk, just talked about repeating and how hard it is, especially with moves like this, to be able to repeat it right away. She has to get the exact uh, swinging again, like before. It looked a little different now, the swinging, I just wanted to say. A couple more goes to put this together now. This is where you build on the learning. Unfortunately, the clock is always against you. <laughs> yes, it's in life as well. Nice Jumps in. Look at straight into the toe cat. Brilliant move. Also, like, just firing to the right there. Too high, too speedy, too powerful, I don't know. Well, she encourages the crowd who did go a little quiet there while they were watching. And they have no issue with responding. They've been fantastic for the last couple of days. Miho launches in, gets the toe catch brilliantly. Nicely done to repeat this. Hopefully she can get it done now. They're cheering her up on this one, and she is going to respond nice. and get it done. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was good that she changed the method to go straight with the right hand to the top and left hand to the volume. Because when she went with both hands to the volume before, as I said, like she was kind of like overpowering it a little bit. So if you talk about wanting separation, this round has that. But certainly a round that I think uh, has suited certain people, certain styles maybe. No, slipping off there a little bit. Yeah, that toe is hard to get in. A lot of people struggle the first time, twice now. It's frustrating, isn't it, this kind of move? Because you don't really know why you're falling off. You know where the hold is, and yet somehow your leg isn't responding properly. Do you need to be in the perfect angle to actually get the weight on the toe hook and the foothold, uh, and the handhold? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, it has to match. I just wanted to say, get in the starting position. As long as you'll be cooled down by the judges, so she good to get that in. Oh. Now, different from her. Yeah, I don't know if that's... Yeah, she just now, because it's uh, nicer to swing here. You can see her, like, uh, the swing is a lot more natural like this. That would have cost her a little bit of uh, chalk and skin there. And also made some progress on the slab, but couldn't quite make it, so no top for her so far. Getting close, but not yet. Um, in, uh, but actually, the, the lead wall, what was actually secured her... Um, um, a podium position last time in Shanghai. So she'll start her run up once again. She seems to have learned the toe now. That's in. Probably fall off immediately now I've said that. Yep. <laughs> you jinxed it. I jinxed it. And uh, we talked about that also yesterday that, like, before the lead round is done, it's not so much about if you're like fifth or eighth or first. It depends on how many points you have because you're going to add these points to your points of the lead. And the other one is fifth. It could be that you have like similar points. Well, it would mean that Laura basically has to top the route just to catch up. With you. So it's a lot about the points, not the, the position you're in yeah. until the lead is done. Well, she's got 21 seconds. This could be last chance saloon here. And she is in. Hooks with that right toe. Right. Last jump with 14 seconds. Last attempt. And no, I think power was a factor there. Getting tired at the end. Putting a few more points on the scoreboard with that higher zone. So much action that we witnessed the past few days. Also from this woman. Yep. She's done it all. She's really had to pull herself back from disappointment earlier on last season. 
wow, really short on that toe hook, like not on a good part of the of the hole, very low down, but made it work, that's all that counts, just swinging a little differently there, yeah, didn't work for her, and she was like turning out, and actually already turning her hip towards the hole where she wants to go, go to, yeah, we should start again. I think the smile on her face showed us that she, she knew what she did wrong and yeah, much better that time. Yeah, but, but she did it again. I don't remember who else caught that right hand. Was it Jenya who caught it with the right? Yeah, you, you, you do caught, uh, catch it with the right and then switch hands yeah. while you switch feet. Let's see if she's got it a bit better now. It's just a different, it's a weird angle, yeah. And she already comes out of the ball earlier because of the different swinging method. So it's harder for her to get back into the wall. Go again. Half a time. We'll be up soon. And now it's more similar to the others, but still, sometimes you want to turn with your hip and your whole body towards the hole you actually swing to, but actually sometimes it's better to uh, do it like the other stage, actually like stay more far away while swinging, which seems weird at first, but it actually works in long term. It was better now. Yeah, it's a different format from World Cups. This is a, a combined format competition. For World Cups, we only have one zone, and there's not points. It's all to do with attempts. I mean, if you've been enjoying the coverage from this, we have an entire World Cup series that continues on until deep into October. Three World Cups before the Olympics. <laughs> yes, next stop already, upcoming week. Yep. World Cup in Innsbruck. It's all the go. All right, Brooke is up to the five again. Less than a minute now as she starts to swing. Hasn't really looked comfortable on these movements yet. So needs to find something pretty quickly. Oh, nicely done from Brooke. Actually gets it done now. That was impressive. Oh, so close on that last move though. And not enough time to try again. That was an amazing performance from Brooke, though. Yeah, she will leave. 83.8 on the board and our final athlete out. Well, that's it for Boulder. We will return for lead very soon. Well, this is the scoreboard. Miha Nanaka leads away with 98.9, followed by Brooke Rabbit at 83.8, easily in touch. Erin Whitney, Gilou Law, Jenya Kazbakova, and Sheon So in the top six. And more out of touch, Mia Krampel and Laura Rogerot with lots of work to do. Well, here is Jenya Kaspakova. She got a little bit of a knee tweak earlier on. She's got tape on it there. Doesn't seem to be causing her too many problems. But with a score of 39.5, she's in touch, but would need something pretty big to catch up and get onto the podium places, considering the high scores of Brooke and Leona Nappi. Yes, exactly. You pointed out her knee there. She has a tape on it since the second boulder um, in the bouldering round before. Um, sometimes also in elite route there can be some uh, pretty intense heel hooks, drop knees, so a lot of pressure on the knee. So uh, let's hope it's okay and not too bad and she can climb without having to worry about it. Because you don't want to have this in your mind while you climb, you want to focus fully on climbing and not about it potentially. Exactly. Well, she's into the first of the scoring zones now. You can see it indicated by that one. The first from this point to the next 10 holds, that's worth one point. Holds number 10 to 30, that's worth two points. 30 to 60, three points, and then 60 to the top is worth four points. So what that means is every zone you enter, you upgrade your score more and more, and your points will rack up quickly. She's clipping quick draws there, those dangly things on the wall. You have to clip all of those in sequence, not miss any out, in order to complete the route properly. And Jenya, smooth at the moment, but not too tricky for the women down low here. Yeah, but you still you want to climb very efficient and not lose too much power. Don't want to make mistakes. So you still have to be careful and climb with control, but also not like over control almost. Or like, oh yeah, a little jump there. Yeah, Dino to unsettle them and that can get the heart racing, can't it? Yeah, into the 10 points with a jump, jumping into the, the higher points section. Literally. We can see the scores now. So they are combined together so that potential 100 points available for Boulder, 100 for Leeds, a 200 maximum. Closest to that 200 will take the win. Yeah, Miho Nanaka got really close in the bouldering there. 98.9 points. High scoring from her. 
Maybe we will see 100 points in the lead. Maybe good winning 100 points for a top. Jenya just mentioned that she hasn't got this clip in yet, which is interesting, and it's fairly low down. Now just stretches towards it. Yeah, it's really a little out of the line. And not directly where she is right now. It's a bit to the right, so it's hard to like reach out to get all the clips done. Talked about it in the past few rounds. Clipping sometimes really becomes an issue and exhausting. Yes, a bit of an error maybe down low, but she's recovered from it, gets the heel in now. And as we approach the 30 section, things are going to get harder from now on. Steeper as well as we enter where this blue volume pushes the climbers out away from the wall. Done. I think that's where we see the feet first here. Yeah, so the set has told us about this, and this is the move. Feet first. She wants a toe hook around the corner. Nicely done from Jenya. Showing us the feet first. She still has the clip in front of her, tangling around in front of her face. A bit scary this because you're going away from a clip. She falls eventually, not managing to lock that toe in. I'm not sure she really wanted to commit with that knee with the with the hook. Yeah, holding her knee there too. It's not a good sign. No, it's not. So a concerning time. Let's yeah. be honest here for Jenya. Mia Krampel comes on from Slovenia. And if you're wondering where some athletes are, for example, her teammate, Janja Garnbrett, well, this isn't like a World Cup. This is a qualifying series. Therefore, only the athletes who needed to still qualify for the Olympics are here. So that explains some of the bigger names that are missing. But wow, what a competition this has been. A two-parter, <laughs> a cliffhanger, as I keep calling it. And Mia Krampel obviously getting through the cliffhanger, getting one of those provisional tickets. And she's underway on her final climb of the series yeah <laughs> the cliffhanger one of the most exciting series out there not on Netflix but on YouTube <laughs> should be Netflix <laughs> alright well Mia goes up with the undercling there with the right hand looks to upgrade her hand to the left and the jump is coming up and Hannah, I mean, you must have done jumps like this. It, it's a fairly easy jump, and yet you've got to be careful, hit it properly. Yeah, exactly. Like, usually root setters don't put a jump in a lead route that low to actually um, want to make the athletes fall off. It's more just to kind of get them a little uh, nervous, get them a little out of their comfort zone, and just, like, see how people deal with it. So it's more just about... Um, challenging the mental game a little bit more but they don't want people to fall off that jump because it's really low down so it's just like getting a little spice in the route as well <laughs> I like of. that yes yeah maybe more for the crowd than for the athletes you know mm. but also as I said to like kind of mess up the mental game a little I've bit for the athletes I've seen people drop it I mean I've seen me drop moves like that so I'm glad yeah. I just threw it and I, I can uh to tell from experience I also didn't like these moves and they were always stressing out a little bit especially because like like they were just starting to get on the scene more when I was still competing um, I mean the last few years more and more but like I feel like the first time we had like a real jump like a low down you didn't really know that they were like easy and not really there to push people off so I think now people actually can trust that it's not going to be that hard and that it's just like to get people out of their comfort zone but yeah it's tricky and I, I think you can see right away if a, a person actually um, gets nervous and gets out of their flow through a jump or if some people just don't care and just do it. There we go. So Mia is now approaching a feet first. Okay. So she's going to change from a jump to some techie moves here. Last fling around the corner though, first of all. Reaching out of that toe. We saw Jenya like, uh, putting her left foot on that small foothold before the toe hook. Before, yeah, just like this, and then wrapping the top around. Now she's doing it just like Jenny before. Stepping down right away, not using the toe hook too much. Yeah, it's just to get you into the right position so you can twist like she did. Her hand is wrapped around the rope there a little. I hope she can get it out nicely now. She's going to have to do it gently, isn't she? And that's her problem. For yes, there we go. Now. Okay. Yeah, rope management, we do talk about this. You can get tangled in it. Yeah, especially uh, when you move left and right um, on a route. Sometimes you, you can't help it that your hand is wrapped around the rope. It's not always a nice thing. No, it's not. Usually well, Usually not at all. A blocked crimp, and she's heading towards the head wall, the final section of this route, and the highest scoring points available. Yeah, you see that next uh, crimp here is made smaller by the route setters, blocked with another chip. 
great camera shot. She stretches out towards her foothold, but drops that right foot down immediately yeah. and oh, slides off. Just about to say, she got really close here now. Really good effort from her, though. Laura enters the arena. Eyes flick up immediately. 14.5, though, let's be honest, is a long way out here. Even if she topped the route, it's going to be 114. When you consider Miho's got 98.9. Yes. Definitely not the best bouldering round for her. Not a high score. But um, no point thinking about the bouldering round for her in that moment right now. She would just focus on the lead route and do whatever she can there to get as high as possible and get as many points as possible added to her previous bouldering score. Yeah, there's uh, obviously a couple of athletes who have been preliminarily qualified who aren't in this final. And the full list can be found on Olympic.com. Or will be anyway once it's published. So, Laura, bunching up. Now it's job time. And Laura occasionally can mess up a move like this. So let's keep our fingers crossed here. Yes, but I actually think she will not have a trouble with this one. I hope I don't jinx it. But this one really looks okay, this kind of move. Yeah. No problem. Yes. And with her sort of psyched to get on the wall, I think she'd actually quite like to get stuck into the jump. Yeah. And I mean, she already uh, is warmed up for jumping because she just had the bouldering round. <laughs> there was not a lot of rest. So they're still in jumping mode. Yeah, well, Perfectly for that route. Lara cracks in a drop knee, makes the clip above her head. Bumping with the hands, working hard here. It's such a steep and long wall. Yes, only entering that steep section, actually, so it's still a long way to go for her. So, Laura gets a heel in. That's the right hand, just pinching in. The thumb on the notex, fingers on lots of friction, though. Makes a small adjustment and then bumps up to the left hand as we begin to enter the feet first section, but another jump to come around this volume. blind and awkwardness. It doesn't look it so much when you're reading the roots from the bottom, but quite a leap around the corner. So you can see how the scores work now. The lead round combined with the boulder round, making a total on the left, so 40.25 now for Laura. This jump, yeah, looking suddenly for the first time a bit awkward -ish. She's kind of do it statically. Yeah, and she makes it work with a high heel there. Locking off with that right trim. <laughs> Classic Lara there, not, not wanting to unnecessarily jump. But that yeah, but it's also a risky move, like around that volume, and you don't want to usually want to climb um, less risky, the least risky as possible in the lead route, just because you have only that one try that we were talking about before. You can see the athletes down below with ice packs on their heads. It's really warm and hot and sweaty here in the stadium, which is not helping. Oh, but she's low on this, upgrades the hand. <laughs> not a really reach here move out of the hill for Laura there starting to struggle a little I feel like yeah she's close isn't she but stretches up fatigue will definitely be playing a part here for the athletes it's been a yes. long four days one round on Thursday one round on Friday two rounds today and the second round oh. out of two today so lots and lots of climbing already done so big respect to all the athletes here Done now this crimp is mainly blocked to avoid the heel hook in this position because it's not it's a pretty easy block to get yes exactly so sometimes uh, a crimp or like another hold is blocked so you have less space with one hand or you cannot match or like in this case you cannot pull, it, pull a heel hook so yeah a lot of different ways why a lot of reasons why holds are blocked different ways of blocking as well and there is a lot to play for in this competition. I mean, prize money is no small thing to consider. So, athletes would love to get on top of the podium and take away some, uh, some goodies from this comp. And you always want to finish a competition as high in the ranking as possible. Because uh, these are all ambitious athletes, even though they might already achieve the main goal while they're at this competition, they still want to climb as high as possible. All right, Laura gets set. The route ramps up in difficulty here, the higher the athletes get. No real crux down low, it just drags at you as you go higher. Out to Cribs now, looking for the solutions through. 
Oh, getting a knee bite in. Didn't see that coming. I didn't see that either. That's smart climbing for Lara. It might, although... Wow. Oh, she gets stuck oh, up there with it. Oh, almost couldn't reach that small chip. Oh my God, what a, what a camera shot. More powerful with the knee than dropping it. So she needs to... I mean, it's a good position to rest in, but moving, you're jammed in underneath and the others enjoy that. Mia's also that. like, whoa, how are you in this position still? Yeah, appreciating the uh, determination it takes Lara to stretch up for that and then return to the knee. That's better, though. My God. Oh, wow. I don't Look where her knee that. is and where her right foot is. This is incredible. Unreal from Lara, and she's made it work. Gets another heel in underneath. She recovered really well from that lower section where she didn't look 100% confident. Up to another like, block grip. The audience understand climbing. They know what they yeah, just saw there. Yeah, the crowd likes what they see. 26 seconds to go, though. We haven't been close to timing out in a long time. Yeah, I almost didn't see that. No, I didn't either. The athletes do have six minutes to complete the route. and I haven't seen Laura look down either. But she's close to falling now. It might not matter with that clock. She's going to go up, and yes, does eventually slip with 10 seconds to go. But wow, what a performance from her. Up into provisional second. She needed a big one, and she got it. Yeah, like very low um, bouldering score, but very high lead score here, and a good fight. And Eric Manise is one of them. She's burst onto the scene. She was fairly unknown in the senior circuit until quite recently. Came through the juniors. And she's been one of the most impressive athletes for the last two comps. She podiumed at World Cups before this. We were waiting for her to really burst onto the scene, and now she has stamped herself in our minds as one to watch. An easy first clip from Erin. She makes some smooth sequences through. Yeah, she had a really good run yesterday in the lead and the day before as well. Good climbing from her on this lead wall so far. Felt comfortable so far, so hopefully now as well. For me, that's what's most impressive about Erin. We tend to get some specialists who prefer boulder or lead. For Erin, it does seem like she's a genuine all-rounder. She has that ability to pull something out of the fire if she's in trouble. Crossing through, needs to keep calm. The jump's coming up. Now, usually, in a competition like this, we'll see at least one athlete blow a jump. So, my fingers are crossed. Hope yours are at home. She'll have to get this right. Brings the right leg up. Eyes the distance. Hits it with the right and left, and she's in nice. Almost overpowering. I think it was too psyched on this, on this uh, jump. <laughs> Well, there's a reason her Instagram done. handle is Erin McBeast. <laughs> she really is a powerful You love to point out that name. I, you love the name. <laughs> I feel that an athlete should definitely uh, promote if, their qualities. If you watch back all of the other rounds of this competition, <laughs> at least once in every stream, Matt points out that name. It's a great name. I'm trying to think Does of any better Does she give you money that, that you uh, do advertisement for her Instagram no channel, comment, actually? Uh, no comment. No I can't comment. disclose okay. these things. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> She's through the reds. Black section to come. Things start ramping up here, remember. The difficulty increases as the points increase. Fun route so far. Stretching back towards that kick drop, which were blowing in the wind yesterday due to the weather. They're still there today, which is easier for the athletes to grab. Up onto the slopes now, keeping things calm, just reconnecting, centering herself. Fingertips on on the left, though. A big move. Boosts up. And to me, she's looking a little tired suddenly. Yes, I mean, it's uh, understandable. So all these rounds and uh, just like 30 minutes between uh, the bouldering round and the lead round. So not a lot of time to recover. Not at all. Yeah, not at all. But already in second position, Erin, thanks to a good bouldering score. In a good position here. The difference between Lara and Erin is obvious there. Lara stretched around the corner there, did ecstatically. Erin jumped. Well, what is that she's doing? Yeah, she's not doing, doing the full feet first. It's like 
I don't know what she's hooked. Toe hook, yeah. yeah. Something in there. But she doesn't really want to commit to the foot fir- feet first completely. It's like a jam. That she's got impressive stuff. So she's putting all like the weight leaning, on the side of the yeah. foot. Yeah. She just, just put her left uh, leg there and just was leaning towards it. And this is the score difference we talked about. Laura at this stage wasn't even in touch. Erin jumps up into first position because of that 69.4 yeah. in the bowl. Big bowl to score from her. Good stuff, Marin, on that feet first. Yes. Very well done. Like, different method, but worked for her. It seemed pretty cool. Um, never saw that, like, a leaning toe jam, whatever it was before. I'd love to see a shot around the corner there. We'll have to guess for now. Right, Aaron rocks up on the heel, up towards the blocked crimp. And as you said before, like, uh, she was starting to look tired, but I think also Aaron is one of the climbers where sometimes you think, oh, they start to look tired and fight, but then she just like 20 more moves. Yeah. So, you know, there's just some, like, these kind of athletes. You're just like, oh, yeah, I think she's going to fall soon. And then, like, 30 moves later, she's still on there. And you're like, how? How is that even possible? Right. Shoulder moves though, just three fingers on on the right. And this is where we saw some foot pops before. Is she going to find that knee bar? Because it's not so obvious. That's why we were also surprised uh, when Laura put it in. Because, yeah, it didn't, it's not a complete obvious one. There are some people who always find knee bars everywhere. Well, and uh, Laura, very good rock climber as well. I think uh, has a big talent in finding knee bars as well. This is where the root reading is interesting because they would have read it together. Laura presumably saw that knee bar or maybe she just found it in the moment. Yes, both possible options. Sometimes uh, the root can feel very different once you're in it than you observe it. But Aaron falls, a bit of a mistake, I think, there, head in her hands. But preliminary first. Yeah, and very good climbing from her. Also 68 points, so similar to her bouldering score, both in the 60s, one and two. 137.5 points and provisional first great competition from her and again like also in Shanghai Erin as we can see 137.5 four athletes having climbed four remaining Mihona Naka still very much in touch with that 98.9 right Jilu Lo from the People's Republic of China is out and about the lady the ice queen I want to start calling her she just never seems to crack that facade ice queen Looks at the wall. The belay's approach. Also had a good bouldering round with 68.5 points. So definitely something to build up on. She had some good sequences, good moves along the way. First draw in, she's underway. <laughs> points on the board now. I remember back in the day before they tweaked the scoring. It was uh, in Munich. There was the the points zone was way off the ground, almost halfway through the wall. This is much better. This system. Yes, I think. Well, Munich was a test, mm. and then they adjusted it. Like that, you have to test it out somehow. Um, it's hard to find the perfect, um, the perfect system, um, like the best point system. But I think they did really well with adjusting it after Munich. It's way better now because both disciplines should have. Kind of uh, the same value, weighting, yeah. Yes. Equal weighting, exactly. And that's hard sometimes. It always depends a lot on, like uh, with this combined form, it depends a lot on the setting as well. Dilu flies, brings the feet back in, gets in that high toe hook. All right, so the easy part done. And I say easy with a uh, pinch of salt, obviously. But it's the more straightforward section. Starts to ramp up now as she gets that right foot on a small edge. A big old drop knee in order to get this next clip in. Climbing very straightforward and uh, determined though, so very, very nice to watch. No hesitation yet. Looks like she looks comfortable. Focused and compass this always. She crosses through, making sure of these holds. Bear in mind the heat here. You've got to be more careful with each movement. You can't get away with friction necessarily always being there. So I'm fascinated to see how she's going to do this section. We've seen so many different variants. Yes. She's going to go straight to the left, not even using the yellow volume where we saw Erin. Her the split she's against. got. Yeah. Well. Crazy flexibility. <laughs> she hasn't got the toe hook in yet. Doesn't need it, apparently. Moving on right away. 
still looks really relaxed and comfortable on the wall. Yeah, a good spin to get into a position. And now, almost a heel-toe cam where your toe is pressing into the wall and your heel is pulling. Now I've changed it into a more traditional heel hook. Yeah, and here on the lead wall, it's also all about finding a good resting position because climbing up the whole wall without checking out at least once is like really, really hard. So it's also finding the best uh, resting positions, but also sometimes you have to be in good shape to actually use the resting positions. Yes. Not everyone can rest at the same spot, and you actually have to be fit enough to stop there, hold the holds well enough, and actually being able to shake out and uh, make sure that the resting position not makes you more tired and actually helps you recover. What a great shot. Her eyes are flicking to the next hold. She gets the foot out, but it's a bad one. Those fingers must be uncurling, no. and they are... If we couldn't really see it well from that camera angle what happened there, but I think it was uh, like a little uh, foot pop or like she swing, swing the, was swinging the feet to the right and then couldn't hold the swing. Well, three to go now. Miho Nanaka looks up. She had an incredible battle with her teammate because obviously only two places available for each nationality and gender. I'm Mori, qualified at the World Champs. And it was a real focus between Miho Nanaka and Futaba Ito. Miho won that battle got into the top 12 and now as we know Olympics beckon but let's get this done first shall we because Miho would like to win this thing yes and she put herself in a great position with her bouldering round I mean 98.9 such a high score so close to the perfect 100 and uh, she showed some really really strong lead performances in the past two days um, uh, yeah I was really impressed by it her lead climbing already in the past year she really stepped up her game but especially in this competition and in the competition in Shanghai in every single lead round she was showing really really strong performances also in the bowling of course but we're talking about the lead right now yeah that uh, Mihun Anaka pushes Laura down a little here already she's really building on a very strong bowler round yes before even having started the climb she's already in third position because of a good bouldering score incredible isn't it this is such a big difference but she's got this nervy jump to come so hold your breath everyone she gets set left foot on nothing remember jumps up but solid from Miho looks like a little warm up jump a little spring to start things off with right well she'll take a moment to rest here not too long though it's not that comfortable with that left foot high up high into the crimps out towards the dish can hear the cheering yeah, gambre gambre is the uh, Japanese alley. Uh, alley just means go, and it's a very, it's a climbery thing to shout. So you'll hear it around gyms, around climbing crags throughout the world. Every nationality has got their own yes. variant. A, at a comp, you hear a lot of different cheering. So Miho Nanaka is about to enter the techie section. Gets a right heel in, stretches up towards the crimp, and how's she going to do this? We know there's a static option available, a jump. Yeah, kind of static it out, a bit boosty. Already moved um, forward into second place behind Erin. She's got an Erin style, uh, I don't know what to call it really, toast slime in, <laughs> or did briefly. Making up new words for this competition. Of course. And she isn't really going feet first, which is interesting. No. She still looks really relaxed. Really climbed straight forward, no hesitation. No problem so far. No, the longer she works out this section, the less she'll have in her arms. A bit of a grimace there. I wonder if she'll rest a little longer. This is the only real rest in the route, apart from that low jump. It's a bit too early, really, down there. Well, we've seen Laura with the knee bar resting, kind of, but it was kind of a forced rest because she wanted to move on and then couldn't. So. Yes, I think it was a stuck rest, but it was impressive stuff to watch. All right, Miho was a bit wild there. She's recovered it, makes the right foot stick, which we know is a crutzy move. Out, but no, she's too low. But in the top spot, one yes. by 5.9. She moved up her points very quickly here, and we know that's a hard move, but first place and uh, quite ahead in points. So, Shenzhou pulls off those protectors for her shoes. She doesn't want any uh, dirt or chalk on her feet. And she's underway. The next time she will touch the floor, she is potentially on the podium here. Nice and easy so far. We have this extra belay person on the ground. 
who's flaking the rope out for the main belay, making sure there's no tangles so the athletes are ensured a smooth journey up the wall. Swinging between good holes down low here, warming yourself up, climbing yourself into the route. Bump up and adjust on that pinch before rocking up on the right heel. She did top the qualification route on Thursday, uh, Friday. So already knows how it feels to top out on this wall here. Trying to, trying to do it again. first. Oh, if you don't clip that quick draw and then you jump, then you're actually in a very bad position. <laughs> a left hand would be a, there. That would be a big error. So she's in this resting position. High toe now. Looks up towards the right and hits the dish. Starting the black hole section now. Just uh, an ultimate athlete out on the stage. Into the slopers, nice and steady so far. Just impressive uh, climbing background does this lady. Her father is head of the Alpine Club in uh, South Korea and big into ice climbing. She did a bit of ice climbing at a time. She's improved at Boulder. She's an excellent lead climber. I just want to see her out on real rock at some point. One for the future. After the Olympics, maybe? Yes, <laughs> a holiday. Oh, she's hanging on those heels. Two heels in, one underneath, toes pointed down, one on the right. Bit of a swing up towards what is a pretty good pinch on that 30 hold. Yes, how will she do that section? She does go for the feet first. But moving back, they have to quickly. Not doing the toe hold, some others do. Of the different methods here. It's fascinating to me that half the field have used that and half haven't. So obviously, uh, I wonder what... Okay, I couldn't hear the conversation that went on between them, but I wonder if uh, they just decided different things or... Well, as I said before, like, of course you discuss things at observation, but you still have to decide yourself which method you pick because there's always more than one option, especially in lead. Like, a ball might be different, but most of the time there too. So uh, sometimes also you have a plan A in your mind, but then you figure like, okay, it doesn't feel so comfortable. So you go for plan B that maybe someone else told you or you also had both in mind already. So it's a lot about deciding really quickly as well in um, the route what you're going to do. And so it's a lot about tactics as well. Worth pointing out there, Xian So is uh, with that 32 from Boulder, even if she gets the maximum here, she's going to be below the top spots. I think climbing third place. How's she going to do this sequence? A bit different again. That's where Miho felt. No problems for her. We've seen that section before from Laura. It's been a while. It's nice seeing it again now. Coming towards the head wall. Yes, the head wall is where things get tricky. Some Tufa-like features up there, which is an outdoor feature. Big pinches, you can see them there. Very shiny holds, meaning there's a lack of texture in those things. You've got to be precise. And you have to say, it doesn't look like she's struggling at all. Remember Laura, is it Laura almost getting timed out up yes. here? Yes. Minute 52 ahead. Yeah, but Laura took a long time with the knee bar there where she had a right foot down there between the volumes. Well, head wall beckons. It's where the angle changes. Oh, but no. Now the heel slip as well. Yeah, it's going to be a fourth position for her, I think. Is the score going to update? Yeah, fourth on our screens right yes. now. So 104.9 her total, 32.8 in Boulder. Right, let's hype this up because Brooke Rabatou with a score of 83.8 could overtake Miho Nanaka for the top spots, the number one place on the podium here. Just a reminder before we have our final athlete, all of these women have Olympic qualification places that will be confirmed afterwards but we know what those scores mean so they are climbing for a place on the podium now Brooke Rabatou gets going on her route into the red nice and cruisy so far has she got anything left in her tank though I mean she's given it a lot over the last couple of days 
points on the board now, though. She reaches up with that right hand. The only one who can take this away from Miho Nanaka. So, trusting that toe, putting it into the dish, into the pocket. Adjusting the feet nice and smooth as she approaches the jump. The last climb of this event. Of the last scary jump as well. Fingers crossed, everyone. You know the drill by now. She gets set, makes the click. So I want to put that left foot on the smear. High up the range. is almost a body length, but it's good. A bit wild, though. Those legs were yeah. far back. I think she um, didn't uh, exactly get the best spot of that left pole, but still made it work. Fortunately, that's what we didn't want to have right now, right? A drop of that uh, jump low down here. Would have been a, an anticlimactic way to finish. Yeah, it. we so want yes. to see a good fight, a good last fight. We want to see someone getting pumped on their wall. Exactly. <laughs> well, she's on 97.8, currently down in fifth. Those are the quick draws. The rope is clipped through to protect the athlete when they fall. See, see the plastic, yeah. Look at the thumbs sliding around. Shiny part, little texture of this holds. Only the one side has friction. Other one is very slippery. And you don't really have any parts of your body on there. No feet, and also the thumb can slip off pretty easily. Slides the rope into that drawer. Now, let's see here which method of the many will she choose. She's resting nicely, finding positions the others didn't. Long arms as well as she reaches around, cuts loose, a little bump and an adjustment as she gets that right foot back on and goes high with the feet. She is going feet first. Kind of a drop knee in there as she thought about it, changed her mind. Clip over the shoulder. You can hear the crowd, they know what they're watching here. They've got an eye on the scoreboard that's ticking over. Yes, she will move in a podium position very soon because she has a very high podium score as well. Yeah, Ooh, she moved on. into a podium position already. Well, she's third, but this is hard for Brooke. That left shoulder started to give up a little bit. Oh, oh. wow. Doing it without the heel. Wow, that was impressive. She had that really low toe on the yellow volume and had to try hard to release that as well. That will have cost her a little bit of energy. She needs a recovery position here. That's where she'll try to shake. Strong coming from Brooke, recovering from that. Maybe not the best method there. We know this section is hard. Yes, it is. 134.8 her total. Aiming for 156. Hunting down Aaron McNeese's 137.5 points now. Getting close already. Well, whatever happens in the next couple of seconds, this is going to be an emotional Brooke Rabatou. Up to second now. That toe is in. She's struggling, though. Just hits the left hand right to the blocked crimp. Got to be careful through here. Barely breathe as you adjust the feet. Got to make that clip, though, first before committing to the head wall. She's starting to look tired. That's going to be a huge fight between her and me, Hononaka. Oh, the oh, heel nearly popped. The heel popped off, but she stayed on. Oh, no. what a fight. We're going to have to wait what and see. What a fight. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. Yes, it's, it is enough. It's, it's been enough. upgraded. Brooke Rabatou wow. takes the top spot, the number one trophy with a 159.8. Uh, just, she's surprised yeah, as well. Yeah, it was just at the end. These last few moves that she did. And two victories in a row for Brooke Rabatou. She won in Shanghai. She's won in Budapest. She says goodbye to the crowd. And we know what that means in terms of Olympic tickets, Olympic qualification. Incredible from Brooke. So, Brooke Rabatou taking the top spot, 159.8. Miho Nanaka in second, 156. Followed by Erin McNeese, third on the podium. Julia Law in fourth. Seon So fifth after that. Lara Rogera fought hard but came sixth near Crample and Jenya Kazbikova. There was a hint of a tear in Brooke Rabatou's eyes there. She took in that incredible moment. Yes, definitely. Some emotions there. Understandable after all the hard work they put in and it's now paying off. Incredible to see. And here we go. So Brooke Rabatou leads the way. 100 that's the points, points from today. That's the points from today. Mihona Naka, 83 after that as we look down at our top eight. 
Lots of athletes, of course, competing throughout. Lucky for some, just missing out, but others making it through. Incredible for them. Stasha Gale down the list. You've got a feel for her. Ella Karem, Petra Klinger, her last competition. And we saw so many talking points and drama throughout this. But for now, the women will rest as they are the ones who have qualified.